My name is Greg Hyatt, this is Eric Manuel and Cameron Quist. And without further ado, Eric's going to introduce our project. All right. Well, as you know, infection with HIV causes AIDS and often death if left untreated. Now, there are several antivirus treatments available, but they're expensive and they have limited availability. So the objective of our work was to develop a drug dispensing scheme based on PI controllers that would you know, optimize the drug use, keeping the virus to an acceptable level while minimizing the amount of drug. We started with the reaction-based infection model developed by Perelson, and we added in a component to simulate the presence of an antiviral drug. We then passed this model through a, a modified doublet test where we allowed it to come to an equilibrium state and then stepped the drug concentration up and down through several levels and measured the response. We then took this response and fed it into Loop Pro's uh, modeling utilities and fitted it to a first order plus dead time model. From there, we were able to get an initial guess value set of PI tuning parameters that we then um, fed back into our original model for testing and fine tuning. And I'll let Cameron talk about the results of that work. So we found that our initial hit gain and tau were entirely inadequate. They were much too weak, and we had to make them significantly more aggressive to the tune of about 80 times the original value for the, uh, for the gain. And so we decided we'd find the KC first because we, we really needed to make sure that the virus did not run away and kill the person and found that it was optimized to get the, the lowest peak for its, uh, at a gain of negative 40. And uh, we then used our tau i to choose the behavior of the curve afterwards. We found that if we wanted to have a steady state of about 10 virus count per, uh, per milliliter of blood, that a tau i of 1.5, which is in years, is good. And then if we wanted a big spike, that would be the smallest big spike at the beginning to just knock it down, our tau i would be about a 0 0.5. And you can see on our, on our graph here, which compares several different, uh, different versions of it, that the green line is our 40 and 0 0.5, which gave us the lowest total value of drug administered over the 10-year period that we had decided to optimize for. And so Greg will tell you about our conclusions. So basically, you know, going, getting back to Eric's original point, our objective was to minimize the amount of medication administered during the, ten year, the first 10 years of treatment. So first five years, the virus is, you know, they contract the virus and it gets up to that detectable level of 10 viruses per milliliter of blood and then after right at that time is when we would begin to treat it and we the, of the two controllers we came up with you know uh, first is kind of the spike method where you give them a little bit more drug and just beat that virus down below the detectable level and that will keep the patient good for about 10 years and the second method was through uh, or the first method whichever you want to call it is more of a continual treatment to keep the virus right at 10. So depending on what you're looking for, um, one virus is better than the other. The first controller, you because you're f treating them consistently, depending on how the antivirus drug affects the person, that's going to give them more consistent, you know, maybe quality of life. But it's also going to be more expensive because, as we saw earlier, you're using up more drug. Um, the second method, you know, would minimize the drug use for the first 10 years, and, you know. Because you're only treating the virus once at 10 years and not continually, that single treatment would prevent the virus from being able to develop a resistance to the antiviral drug. So we chose that the second controller, the spike method, would be the optimum way to treat uh, the HIV virus, and it would optimize the process. Yeah, now, does anyone have any questions?